say that with four and five people who have had direct experience with the mental health system, you guys are going to make history today. It should be about is being our time. Our time has come. And I'd really like to ask you to help me because the spirit of what today is about is about us speaking in our own voice. And this is the beginning. I just want everybody to keep that in mind. This is the beginning of us. The beginning of us speaking for ourselves. The beginning of us saying, no, you don't know what's best for me. I know what's best for me. So. So can you help me out here? I'm going to say it and you say it back. Our time has come. Our time has come. Whose time has come? Our time has come. All right. And, you know, this is where we're headed today. This is what it's all about. It's about us making a stand, being together, having our voices heard, and making a change through unity and through our voices coming together together, to, to coming together to really be the, be the voice for us and not have other people do that. What do we want? Human rights! What do we want? Now! What do we want? Human rights! Now! Human rights! Now! It's a historical moment and an important event. And I gave up something which was the most powerful thing I had that I didn't know, which was my voice. I let somebody else plan my life, make decisions for me. Okay, go to this program. Yes, yes, yes. Take these meds. Yes, yes, yes. I felt like Kunta Kinte on the plantation. I just became a slave to the system. And what I slowly realized is that when I let other people plan my life, the result of that plan is nothing at all. Right. So as time went on, I lived my nothing life, smoking cigarettes, in a day program, taking a lot of meds, hanging out with 25 people in a group home, um, people telling me that I couldn't sit on the porch, <laughs> and I, I think I started getting my voice, I was like, look, I pay you $1,000 a month, I can sit on the damn roof if I want to. I uh, started to meet some other psychiatric survivors who fought really hard for their voice. And I started hanging out with them. I started advocating with them. And some of them are sitting right at this table. Um, and they taught me, which I've never forgot. They said, Sabrina, we speak for ourselves. Okay? They told us, we have the right to be heard and listened to. And also, we don't have to be victims to the system. And the most incredible thing about that, that's something that stuck with me. And I regained my voice, and I haven't shut up since. <laughs> I will never shut up. You can like what I say, you don't have to like what I say. I will say it. So your voice is the most powerful thing that you have. And you must never give that up. You must never give up your priorities in life and your dream in life. 111, 11. We gonna bring these voices together. And we are going to demand the right to have to be heard, and we're going to demand the right for alternative treatment, self-help, mutual support. So on this day, one eleven, we're going to declare that right. You know why? Because we're human beings and we earn that right. I don't have a right. On this day, 111.11, 11, 
we're gonna choose, we're gonna declare the right to choose our neighbors and live in the communities we want to live in. That's right. And the right to have safe, affordable housing and not live in institutes. You know why? Because we earn that right, we human beings. That's right. On this day, we earn the right to have families. That's right. And be a parent. That's right. And have children. That's right. And be able to keep and raise our children the way we That's see right. fit. That's you know why? You earn that right. You're human. We earn that right. There you go. Huh? What's the form? Uh, form consent. On this day, we choose the right to have informed consent. That we should not be forced into any treatment that we feel should hurt us. We have the right to choose our treatments. And the reason why is because we human and we earn that right on this day. Thank you. Stop force treatment. Stop force treatment. Stop force treatment. Stop force treatment. I'm really excited that that we the people and the have has taken it upon themselves to bring you guys all here together, to bring us here together, to speak for ourselves for the first time in living memory of anybody. And I'm really excited that you pulled out the Our Time Has Come banner because it's about damn time our time has come. Woohoo! And we have to speak for ourselves. So I want to say, you know what? NAMI doesn't speak for us. The Mental Health Association doesn't speak for us. Niapers doesn't speak for us. The psychiatrists don't speak for us. We speak for ourselves and we can't forget that. That first and foremost, our movement is a human rights movement. Because like people, like Sabrina said, we are human. And all humans have basic human rights. And we, alone among almost all groups in the United States or in the world, are denied our basic human rights because of our labels. And that's not right, and our movement is a human rights movement first and foremost, and that's what we need to get across to people. Um, the other thing I wanna just mention is an issue that I happen to be involved with working on um, currently a lot, so it's a lot on my mind, um, is that one of the alternatives that we wanna ask for is um, services and supports that are informed by an understanding that almost everybody in the mental health system is a survivor of trauma. And that also, and, and because we're survivors of trauma, many of the things that are done to us in the name of, quote, help, are actually hurtful to us. And uh, the way that the mental health system does business on a regular basis re-traumatizes people. Or if you weren't a trauma survivor before you went into the mental health system, you damn sure are one once you're inside. Right. And I think we need to make those points very really loud and clear. That there, there was a time when New York State Office of Mental Health was actually a national leader in thinking about the impact of trauma, in reducing restraint and seclusion in institutions. And that time has come and gone, and it's time for that to come back again. It's time for us to focus on trauma, on the needs of trauma survivors, and on changing the system so that it no longer traumatizes anyone, um, who's, whether you've been a trauma survivor before, or that we are human and we deserve our human rights. Yes, Thank we you. do. Our time. Our time. just uh, talk about how this day happened. And uh, we did this on a shoestring budget, and we did it also with a lot of help from some uh, sponsors who really uh, gave some really valuable things to make this happen. I want to let you know who they are. They're in the program.